Robert is only moments from being launched into the outside world. That's it. Come on, breathe in and out. Well done. Okay. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. For the past nine months, he's been nurtured in his mother's womb. All his needs have been met by his mother through his umbilical cord. Now his body will have to fend for itself. But one vital organ is still far from complete. Like all babies, Robert is about to be born with only half a brain. What seems like a defect is actually Robert's greatest asset. Because the human brain is unformed at birth, it is shaped by our experience of the outside world. It is this that enables us to develop a thinking machine more powerful than any other on Earth. The downside is that for the first few weeks of life, Robert has no conscious control over his own body. The part of his brain that should give him that control is incomplete. The outer layer, his cerebral cortex. Although it contains more brain cells than Robert will ever need, 50 billion of them, the cells are isolated. What's missing are the connections between them. But remarkably, they have already begun to sprout thin tendrils, seeking to make contact with other cells nearby. In the meantime, the control of Robert's body lies with another part of his brain. Buried deep beneath the cortex is Robert's primitive brain. Unlike the cortex, it is already hardwired. Electrical impulses fire along millions of connections, each carrying a specific instruction. None of these impulses requires conscious thought. When Robert's body needs food, his primitive brain activates an automatic survival mechanism. Broadcasting his need to the outside world. Robert's primitive brain is doing more than just ordering a meal. I know you're His own immune system is not yet up and running. Each time he feeds, his blood gets a top up of antibodies to protect him against disease. What's more, these antibodies are uniquely tailored to his needs. When Robert's mother kisses him, she picks up any germs on his skin. Her body makes antibodies designed to fight them. 
and she passes them on to Robert with his next feed. Despite Robert's helplessness, he's not totally dependent on his parents. He's armed with a survival mechanism unique to babies. Unlike his father, Robert has very little insulating fat beneath his skin. Heat just pours out of his tiny body. In the warmth of the womb, this wasn't a problem but now he is very vulnerable to cold. To combat this, Robert has his own inbuilt central heating system, usually only found in hibernating mammals. When Robert's skin temperature drops, a thermostat in his primitive brain registers the change and fire signals deep inside his body. These signals arrive in dense stores of specialized fat cells. Once triggered, they start to burn fat to generate heat. So Robert is able to maintain his core body temperature. It'll take a year for the fat cells to run out of fuel. But by that time, he'll be better insulated. Robert's primitive brain does a good job of keeping him alive. But it's hopeless at learning. Its hard wiring makes it rigid and inflexible. Complex skills are way beyond it. A bobby, a bobby. A bobby. The cortex, on the other hand, is a blank sheet just waiting to be filled with new skills and behaviours. That'll be granny. I'll get it. At the moment, it still has some way to go. At his age, it can't even make sense of what he sees. His eyes turn light into electrical signals. But it's his cortex that translates these signals into an image. And since most of the connections are missing, the full picture isn't getting through. So Robert's view of the world is pretty weird. His brain can't combine the images from both his eyes. Hello, darling. That's my little sweet arm. Oh, darling. There we are. There we are. Oh. There are no distinct colours or shapes. Yeah, a little bit. He's gone for a bit longer. So it isn't clear where one object ends and another begins. Gorgeous, sweetheart. Now, who wants a cup of tea? Oh, oh yes, please, yeah, darling. Okay. Oh. And it isn't just his eyesight. Oh. All of Robert's senses are in chaos. But he's so firm, isn't he? So strong. There we are. Hello. Strong signals from his ear spill over into his vision. So any sudden noise... Tim! ..is seen as well as heard. There we are. Oh, gee, good. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Oh. The one thing he can recognise is the shape of a human face. And that's because it's an instinct, pre programmed into his primitive brain. Before it can make sense of the world, Robert's cortex needs to master the basics. Darling, would you mind taking Bob? Because I'm going to go to the shop, so I'm just going to find my keys. Fortunately, Robert's primitive brain comes with a built-in training programme. Hmm. 
its reflexes force him to look at things that will improve his vision. Not such a great move, though, was it? But... Such as a chessboard. A bold, regular pattern generates strong, regular signals. Strong signals reinforce connections, making them permanent. Where there's no signal, the tendril breaks off and goes in search of a better connection to make. Another reflex makes Robert turn to look at anything passing in front of him. Bobby, you like that, Bobby? You like the colours? Improving his ability to see moving objects. Through trial and error, Robert's cortex is constantly rewiring itself. Learning to recognise and understand the world around him. Let's have a look at a gambit from the young Casper. He's only three weeks old, but Robert's cortex is already taking shape. That would be right there. Soon, he'll discover that he has a mind of his own. Robert's primitive brain has only one way of communicating with the outside world. For six weeks, this instinct has guaranteed his survival. But now, he needs to expand his repertoire. As Robert's cerebral cortex grows, he is able to start learning from experience. That's much Robert doesn't mean to smile. Hey, Lewis. OK, here we go. I think he's just smiled. Did you smile then? But his little grimace earns a surprising response. Good boy, did you just smile Did you give a good smile for Daddy? And the more he smiles, the more attention he gets. Robert is learning a new way to communicate. <laughs> the more Robert communicates, the faster his cortex can develop. She's going to ask it and hasn't worn a hat before. At the moment, Robert's cortex can't make sense of adult patterns of speech. Strings of words just blur into one another. But when Robert shows off his new skill... Oh, look, a smile! <laughs> a smile! Yes, it encourages adults to talk directly to him. And when they do, they instinctively change the way they talk. Yes, now, which is your favourite colour? Which is your favourite colour? Look, look at the lovely, lovely red. That's a really lovely colour. Slow sing-song tones help his cortex to wire itself to recognise distinct sounds. And look, look at the feathers. Look at the feathers. It's wonderful. And look at the feathers. Do you love the pink? <laughs> Back to you, Dad. Oh, yeah. Where's the time? Baby talk might sound silly, but it's helping Robert to hear words more clearly. She's at the park with Dad, oh. yeah.
So far, Robert's cortex has been growing steadily. But something remarkable is about to happen. The building blocks are in place. A whole new world is opening up to him. But the more information that comes into his brain, the more brain power Robert needs to handle it. The connections he has just aren't enough. The growth of his brain accelerates exponentially. Robert's cortex is making nearly two million connections every second. Every single thing that Robert sees and hears is shaping his brain. It will grow faster in the next few weeks than at any other time in his life. It is growing so fast, there's no more room inside his skull. So it starts to crumple up to fit more cortex into the same space. forming the characteristic wrinkles of the human brain. Hi, Susie. Oh, no, sorry we're a bit late. How you didn't know you? what to wear. <laughs> I'm fine, mate. How are you? Good I'm to fine. see you. You look really well. Despite the massive growth in Robert's cortex... He's still dominated by the reflexes of the primitive brain. Such as the instinct to turn and look at anything passing in front of him. But now his cortex is powerful enough to rebel. A signal is fired along a new connection, reaching far down into the primitive brain, where it jams the signal controlling the reflex. For a moment, Robert's gaze is stuck. But with the reflex turned off, Robert's cortex seizes its moment and takes control. To the outside world, nothing has changed. But from now on, every time Robert turns his head, Hello, sweetie, you all right? Yeah. It's because he wants to. Some instincts of the primitive brain never completely go away. But as long as Robert's cortex keeps firing its signals, the turning reflex will stay suppressed for the rest of his life. Choosing what he looks at is one thing. Getting hold of it is another. Trying to coordinate what he sees with controlling his hand is a monstrously difficult task. But Robert's cortex has been preparing for this challenge. It has vastly overgrown the number of connections it actually needs. Allowing him to test billions of alternative pathways for every action he takes. Now, a process of elimination begins. Whenever Robert gets close, the best connections carry the strongest signals and survive. Those connections carrying no signals begin to wither and die. Robert's cortex is pruning itself into the most efficient structure.
It takes time and it can be frustrating. But Robert is building a powerful tool which will last the rest of his life. There we are, Bobby. We're going for a walk. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right, Mikey. Only four weeks later, and Robert is close to getting what he wants. The redundant connections in his cortex have been pruned away. Now the final touches are being added. Specialized cells called glial cells are busy coating the strongest connections with a layer of fat. These fatty sheaths insulate the signals, improving their efficiency. When Robert reaches out, strong signals fire along the optimum pathways. directing his hand precisely where he wants it to go. This tiny grasp is an enormous leap forward. Hey, monkey, that's mine. Robert has started to take control of his domain. Robert has only just begun a journey of learning that will last his entire life. The process of rewiring in his cortex will slow down, but even when he's 90, it will still be forging new connections and being shaped by the world around him. <laughs>